Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And as the scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Bible says, enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. It's a good thing to give thanks and it's good things to praise the Lord. And as we come together on today, we certainly want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, it's a good thing to come and give thanks unto the Lord because he is great and he's greatly to be praised. And I want to wish all the mothers a, a happy Mother's Day. Uh, truly, uh, God is good and we love our mothers. We love them dearly. Uh, we love them so much. <laughs> I going to say that. I was going to say something. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We, we love them. And we give thanks and grace unto them. And we praise God for them. Amen. They put forth a special sacrifice. I believe it's because of those nine months they carried us. I believe it's because the getting up in the midnight hours, in the wee hours of the night, uh, feeding and nurturing and taking care and, and being at the ones that keep us going, keep us living, to keep us uh, surviving. So I salute all the mothers that have a love that's beyond all understanding. I salute all the mothers that go beyond even physical abilities to take care of their families and to take care of those in whom they love. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we want to remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved, and that the Lord will continue to help us, to strengthen us, give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding on how to uh, evolve even during these changing times. Uh, not everybody, everybody doesn't like change, but change is inevitable. And let us have it in our hearts and our minds that we will change and that we will grow, that we will mature ourselves in Christ. So um, uh, make your prayer request known and we're gonna go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, certainly we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, the anointing, the ability, Lord, to walk in your ways, the ability to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, today we will give thanks. Today we will magnify you. Today we will lift you up. I have it in my spirit, Lord. We are determined, determined to magnify the name of the Lord. Your name is too great. You're powerful and too awesome not to give glory and honor to. So, Lord, we, power, we make known unto us your ways. Make known to us, hallelujah, how to give you glory, how to magnify you in these last and evil days. And, Lord, bless our service on today. Give us the mind, Lord, to be on one accord. Bless our singers on today. Bless those that are gathered together here in your audience. Strengthen them in their spirit, their soul, and their body. Grant us what we need in the name of Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We certainly do thank God and welcome you to another uh, live broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. I'm the lead pastor, Suffolk and Bishop-elect, Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we thank God for our leadership here on today. We thank God for our, our lovely wife, lovely wife Tracy Quinn. Amen. And we thank God even in our audience on today, the mother of Christian ministries. Amen. Mother Louise Davis. Amen. <laughs> Who even celebrated her birthday. 70 years old. Yeah, glory. I, 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 I didn't ask how old she was, but I wouldn't have guessed 70. <laughs> We certainly do thank God for her. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in our labor of love. And we certainly do thank God for, I call them our first responders, the tribe of Judah. Amen. Our praise and our worship team. Amen. And our musicians, we thank God for them coming uh, and pressing their way to make this a great uh, service. And I also thank God for you all that tune in, that support, that send up likes. Thank you, Lord, that have views. Uh, uh, in this pandemic, we have more views now than we did before. 
So we thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that lets us know that we're vital. That lets us know that we're needed. Amen. So we want you to uh, join in our service at home. Give thanks unto the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost percolating. I feel the move of God moving in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. So we, they're going to come and bring us an A and B selection. So let us sing with them and let us rejoice with them. Amen. And give praises unto our God. In Jesus' name, amen.
God, we worship you today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says, I won't go back. I won't go back to the way that it used to be. Hallelujah, God, for you have revived me. You have saved me. You have filled me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. I will not go back. I won't go back into the world. There's nothing out there for me. There's nothing out there for you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him in a sanctuary. Hallelujah.
Paul said himself, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. And I'm reaching for those things that are before me. In the process of not going back, you got to reach. you got to press toward that mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Don't go back. Just declare it and create it in your own heart. Don't go back. Don't go back to the way things used to be. So we thank and praise the Lord uh, for this portion of the service that we're never going back. We're never going back to the way things used to be. And uh, I want to say to those that are in Christ Jesus and you may have suffered some things and things may not be lining up the way you want them to line up because life has changes. Life has a swift transition. But I want to encourage you today that things can change in a day. The children of Israel spent 400 years in the land of Egypt, but one day changed that whole scenario. The Lord sent Moses and told him to set my people free, and things changed. The children of Israel, they were in bondage. They were held down until the coming of the Lord Jesus. And then when Jesus showed up, died on the cross, in one day, things were changed when he got up, when he got up with all power. So things can change in a day. Thank you, Lord. What a difference a day make. And then when the Lord has blessed you and made powerful changes in your life, you got to get over your past. Tell somebody, get over it. Get over it. Thank you, Lord. You got to get over the hurt you got to get over the pain. Amen. People may have died in your family. you got to get over it. I'm saying that to you now so that um, in times to come, thank you, Lord, when times happen, you can get over it. You can move forward in your situation and in your condition. You can get over it. 
Life has a lot of ups. Life has a lot of downs. Thank you, Lord. And it's good for me to tell you this now because when, when tragedy hits or when struggle hits, me telling you to get over it may seem hard. So I'm telling you it now so you can purpose it in your heart that no matter what happens in life, Jesus Christ is there to help you to get over it. He's helped you. He's there to help you to be on your side, to cause you to be not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. He gives us the mindset that lets us know that we can do all things through Christ yes. that strengthens us. And I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that God has allowed certain things to happen. Thank you, Lord. I haven't heard anybody say this yet, and I'm halfway saying it now. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for the corona experience. Thank you, Lord. I'm saying that. <laughs> It's hard for me to say it. You know, sometimes when you come to realization of things, it's hard for you to say it. Thank you, Lord. But Lord, I give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I praise your holy name. Not that you're the author of this, uh, what's going on, but that you allowed it. And I know that there's some good in it that you're going to work out. Amen. Hallelujah. And all things work together for good to them that love God, Amen. to them that are the called according to his purpose. Yes. And that fits in line with our message on today. Thank you, Lord. And I'll get into that uh, a little later. But we certainly do want to uh, acknowledge each and every one of you that have, have tuned in. And um, as we prepare, Christian Ministries is going to roll out a very aggressive plan uh, for people to return. And in that plan, uh, I'm going to send a letter out to our members and detailing uh, what our protocols will be. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to have uh, conference calls with our deacons and with our cleaning crews and then also um, with our missionary board uh, so that we can uh, all be on one accord. And I'm going to uh, send out a massive letter to all of our members so that we'll know what to do as time comes on. Amen. And we certainly do praise God uh, once again for everything that is going on in these times. And uh, we want you to remember Christian ministries and your love offerings and in your tithing and in your giving. And I certainly do want to take this time just to thank everyone that have stepped up. Everyone has stepped up uh, in their giving. Uh, to Christian ministries, and I want to thank God for your love offerings uh, that you have sent. Uh, some people are working with Tidely. I said it uh, last week. I wish I'd have instituted that a long time ago. Thank you, Lord. Tidely uh, is a is the online giving that we've uh, established, and um, so that is working out beautifully. And you'll soon you'll see a pop up in your screen on how to give uh, on Tidely. Also, too, um, I want you to give through mailing your tithes and your offerings to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508, or you can drop them off in our secure drop-off box. Amen. And also, too, um, um, the Lord just laid this on my mind that um, those that are driving by the church, and you have a particular prayer request, you can put them in our drop box too as well. And be sure uh, Pastor Quinn will pray for you and your prayer request. I come up um, uh, practically every day. I was laughing with my wife earlier today, uh, yesterday, that I got in the phone and my smartphone told me uh, how far I was from the church. <laughs> I said, uh, that smartphone kind of knows where I'm going. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But I come up to the church every day, and um, during those times, I pray, I seek after God. Um, so I want you to, I don't pray at the altar every day, but I do come to the altar the majority of the days, and I pray, and I seek God. So in those times when you put your request in, I'll get them, and I will pray for you. Amen. And it's good to have people that are praying for you and with you uh, so that God can bless you and give you what you need. 
Amen. So we certainly do thank God once again for our service. And um, I won't be before you long. i got about 20 minutes. Amen. And I'm going to use these last 20 minutes uh, to talk to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many of you love the gospel? Yeah. Amen. The Bible says it's the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. And uh, we've been uh, preaching out of the book of Acts, and today is no different. Amen. I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter number five. And it's hard for me, um, I notice and I recognize some things uh, you've got to yield into. Uh, I'm speaking to my new preachers coming up uh, and pastors coming up that um, normally on this day I would preach a, a sermon about mothers. And um, uh, it's hard for me uh, in the sense to do that if I'm not led to do that by, by the Lord. And um, he has a different message uh, for us on today, but we certainly do honor our mothers and we do give glory and honor to the mothers that uh, labor and work with their children. Amen. To raise children. It's, and that's the thing I'm learning about being a dad anyway, that you never get through teaching your children even when they're adults. Amen. When they grow up and they're adults, they still need some instruction. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So I feel the silliness coming on. I got to let it go. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So we want to go to the book of Acts, chapter number five. And we just really want one verse of scripture out of there uh, in dealing with verse 41. Acts chapter number five and verse 41. And this is a, uh, how can I say it, a continuation of a continuation. Uh, the continuation was when uh, Peter and John, they healed the man at the lane, at the gate of Beautiful. And then after they had healed that man, um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, those that were in charge of the temple, they got mad with him. And they chastised him for doing it, threw him in jail. And then after that, um, they warned them not to preach in that name. So after they was released, uh, you think they stopped? No, they didn't stop. They continued to preach in the name of Jesus. So uh, they find themselves in trouble again for lifting up the name of Jesus. Those that would lift up the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, you may always find yourself in trouble. But it's good to lift up the name wherever you go, no matter what happens. Never stop praising him. Never stop giving him glory. Never stop giving him honor. So uh, that brings us then to Acts chapter number 5 and verse 41. And it reads as thus. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And I just want to read that again for you in your hearing. Um, Acts chapter number 5 and verse 41. It says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. And daily, in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. And I just want to take for a thought from that 41st verse. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. Uh, I want to take for a thought rejoicing in shame, rejoicing in 
shame. Can you say that together with me? Rejoicing in shame. Um, an oxymoron. I just want to lay this out this as a foundation. Uh, the, uh, an oxymoron is uh, kind of like a figure of speech uh, which has contradictory terms in it. Uh, a great example of that is, if I were to say the statement, he was unfaithful faithful. If I were to say the statement, uh, his words were truly false. That's an oxymoron. His words are truly false. If I were to make another statement uh, wherein uh, some of my family members would say, I'm going to kill you dead. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. If you're going to kill them dead, they're already dead when you killed them. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. And uh, Job made a statement uh, that's kind of like an oxymoron when he was glorifying God. He said, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Though you slay me, you're going to slay me, but still I'm going to trust you. That's kind of like an oxymoron. And sometimes when we serve the Lord, when we serve the Lord, not everything makes sense. If you're going to put your trust in, in the Lord, there's going to be instances, there's going to be times in you serving him where it won't make sense. It's, it'll be similar to an oxymoron. You, you're doing things that don't make sense, but yet God is requiring it of you. And uh, when we... Think about that. There's a reason for that. Because the wisdom of God is wiser than man. The, the, the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Man has a hard time understanding the wisdom of God. And the reason why that is is because uh, the man's heart, our heart, is carnal. The Bible says that a carnal-minded person can't understand is enmity against God. And they're not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. So if you're not spiritual, the scripture tells us that we speak the words of wisdom, not as man speaks it, but as the Holy Ghost teaches it. And the Holy Ghost compares spiritual things to spiritual things so that they that who are spiritual will be able to understand the things that be of God. And it's important for an individual to be spiritual, to be spiritual minded, because the carnal mind, as we've already stated, is enmity, it's against God. It, it's not, it can't be subject to God and it's hard to understand things of God. If you're not spiritual, you can't, really comprehend and understand the meaning of tithing and giving. If you're not spiritual, you can't really put together and understand the meaning of love, of, of forgiveness. Uh, back in the old, they had an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But those that are spiritual take on a new commandment that, that the Bible says, pray for you, hate you and despitefully use you. Uh, the scripture tells us that, that uh, we ought to love one another. And the Bible says that uh, no man have, can show no greater love than this, than to lay down his life for his friend. So it, it takes time to understand the spiritual things of God, but they have to be spiritually revealed. They have to be spiritually understood. And when we go through life, when we go through life, you have to understand the power of patience, being able to wait on the Lord. And it makes a difference how you wait on the Lord. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. You have to be spiritual to understand that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings of eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It takes a spiritual mind to understand that you're testing your trials and, and, and understand that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. It takes a spiritual mind to understand that no matter what happens in my life, God has a plan. God has a way. It takes a spiritual mind to understand that no matter what the enemy brings my way, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah, that God has given us power to condemn everything that would rise up against us. It takes a spiritual mind to, to understand that uh, if, if God be for you, then who then can be against you? Serving God is like an oxymoron because when it looks like I'm going down, I'm really going up. When it looks like uh, I have nothing, yet I'm possessing all things. When it looks like I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, uh, still a cattle on a thousand hills belongeth unto me. Hallelujah. It takes a spiritual mind to understand that, that this light affliction uh, was just but for a moment. It's working for us a far and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't, it doesn't look like I should be winning. It doesn't look like that, that, that things are going my way. But in essence, things are going uh, the way of the child of God because all things do work together. God, If God be for you, then who then can be against you? Uh, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Hallelujah. God has, has, has given his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding so that we can, by a spiritual mind, understand the mind of God. Uh, I, I think about even our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities. And it seemed like uh, Jesus would say in his mind, why well, I got to suffer for them? Uh, but it's an oxymoron because it pleased God to bruise him. For, for with his stripes, we would become healed. Uh, with his stripes, we would become delivered. Uh, Jesus died so that we can live again. What an oxymoron. Hallelujah. And God, in his infinite wisdom and in his infinite grace, uh, for an individual to grasp hold of the things that be of God, you've got to have a spiritual mind. You've got to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh to be understand those things that God has established for them that love him. The scripture says that by foolishness, the, the world doesn't understand God. Hallelujah. But God took the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God took the foolish and the simple things to confine those that are mighty. It seems like an oxymoron. Hallelujah. That, that when, when we look at it from a natural state of mind, that we would want to rule over people. That we would want to be the kings over people. But through God, God said the greatest among you are going to be your servant. Hallelujah. The greatest among you are going to be the ones that humble themselves beneath the mighty hand of God. Uh, it seems like an oxymoron that I should want to exalt myself. But God said in his word that those that want to be exalted got to humble themselves beneath the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. So I don't think it's strange. My God, I don't think it's strange why Peter uh, and James and John and the crew, they counted themselves worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. It seems like an oxymoron that they would want uh, 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 rejoice in the shame. But when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, when you think about the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. When you think about the name of Jesus, that there's no other name given under heaven where men must be saved. Why not rejoice? Hallelujah, because there's power in the name. Hallelujah, and they counted themselves worthy to suffer for his name. It was 
oxymoron that the Bible would say, count it all joy. Hallelujah. When you go through diverse temptations, when you're going through your tests and your trials, instead of wanting to give up, look to the hills from which cometh your help and know that all your help is coming from the Lord. You got to change your perspective. You got to change the way you move with God. If you're anxious, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But with prayer and thanksgiving, give thanks unto the Lord. When the enemy tries to overcome you, hallelujah, don't operate in the spirit of fear. For the Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Hallelujah. When the enemy tries to overtake you, you all you got to do is come to the throne of grace and pray unto your God. Hallelujah. Who has power, who is able to deliver you and give you what you need. It's an oxymoron, my friend. Hallelujah. But God dwells in the oxymoron. My Lord, that's right. God dwells in that which doesn't seem right. Hey, hallelujah. When the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho, it didn't seem right, but God was in the midst. Hey, hallelujah. When the children of three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace, Jesus was in the midst. Hey, hallelujah. No matter what's going on in your life, you may like seem like you're going down, but Jesus is in the midst. He says, I'm nigh thee, even in thy mouth. My God, my friend, in my conclusion, hallelujah, life may seem like it's giving you a box of rocks, but you got to take those rocks and polish them up so that they can become diamonds. Hey, hallelujah, my God, hey, hallelujah, life may be seem to give you a bunch of lemons, but you got to take those lemons and make you some lemonade and drink it all up. Hey, hallelujah, what shall I render? unto the Lord for all that he has given unto me. Hey, I will drink of the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I see why they rejoice because when it looked like they were going down, they were really going up. When it looked like the enemy had them all surrounded, God had put them under their feet. Why not rejoice? Lift up your head, O oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory he shall come in who is that king of glory it's the lord strong and mighty it's the lord mighty in battle he said why not rejoice he said i'll never leave you i'll never forsake you i'll be with you always even until the wind of the world why not rejoice he's never lost the battle Hey, kind of all shut up. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Why not rejoice? Hallelujah. Because God before you, who then can be against you? Why not rejoice? My friend, the early church. Hey, hallelujah. I feel my help coming on up in here. The early church was a dynamic church. Why? Because they were able to rejoice. They were able to give God thanks. My God, you got to rejoice. You got to give God thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes, hallelujah. In understanding the early church, they had a lot of tension, but they were still on one accord. They had a lot of problems. But they were still on one accord. The enemy was fighting them within, but they were on one accord. The enemy was fighting them on without, but they were still on one accord. Why? Because they had a, had a savior in view. They had a deliverer in view, and his name is Jesus. My friend, life may be going in topsy-turvy kind of different ways. As we say over here in the quarrel of Christendom, that the storms of life may be raging. Ah, but the oxymoron is, you got an anchor. Hey, hallelujah. You got to let down your anchor. Hey, and he'll hold you steadfast and cause you to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. You've got to realize that you've been bought with a price. Hey, and you are not your own. Thank you, Lord. And, and we could see if we were go to in the scriptures that through Peter and the apostles and their aggressive preaching and their aggressive teaching and their ability to rejoice in, ad, in adverse times, the church started spreading like wildfire. Hallelujah. The church started opening up like wildfire. Why? Because they refused to quit. They refused to give in. They refused to give up. Hallelujah. My God, I feel the message changing. Hallelujah. Refuse to quit. Hey, if you want to see God show up in your life, refuse to give in. If you want to see the windows of open, heaven open up to you, refuse to bow down. Hallelujah. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. The greatest, the greatest weapon in our arsenal is get over it. Hallelujah. The greatest weapon in our arsenal is get over it. Get over what? Get over the hurt. Get over the pain and start rejoicing. I see why the Lord said, oh, magnify. Hey, the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Trouble in your way and you got to cry sometime. Get over it. Hallelujah. And start rejoicing. Hey, stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Hey, hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Get over it. Tell your neighbor, get over it. Hallelujah. I remember growing up. Hey, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I remember growing up. Thank you, Jesus, and all my friends. It seemed like all of them, I didn't know. They seemed they all had some brand new kicks, some brand new sneakers. Thank you, Lord. But I had them slippery slides. If y'all know what them slippery slides was, they, they, were them, they were them canvas tops with, with plastic bottoms. You would, you would try to run, heck you Lord. Your foot would bust out of the side of it and the shoe would keep on going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was ashamed of those shoes. Hey, hallelujah. But I have to get over it. You may be ashamed of some things that has happened to you in your life, but you got to get over it. And the way to get over it, the way to get over the shame is you got to rejoice. The way to get over the pain, you got to rejoice. The way to get over the test and the trial, you got to rejoice. Give thanks unto the Lord. Rejoice in the shame and he will exalt you. He will lift you up. His glory will fill your temple. Rejoice. And I say rejoice. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I will rejoice. I will magnify him. Hey, hallelujah. My friends used to talk about me, but I'm rejoicing. Hey, hallelujah. My mother and father forsook me, but I'm rejoicing. Hey, hallelujah. Bank account low, but I'm rejoicing. Hallelujah. Paul said rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice in patience. Rejoice in affliction. Rejoice in necessities. Rejoice in distresses. Why? Because it's an oxymoron. Hallelujah. Paul said, when I had nothing, yet I possess all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It looked like my life was going downhill, uh, but it was really going uphill. Hallelujah. Why? It's an oxymoron. Thank you, Lord. Never forget, my friend, and my conclusion my Lord, oh, I'm really done now. I feel it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My friend, in my conclusion here, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Though you may be a servant of Christ and it looks like you're in a shameful situation, maybe you're driving a, a pinto, rejoice. Maybe you're homeless, but you're in Christ. Rejoice. Uh, maybe you're in a shelter, 
but rejoice. Amen? Hallelujah. Because when you start to thank God, when you start to thank God for what you do have as opposed to what you don't have, the Lord will open up and make a way. Hallelujah. What the enemy wants you to focus on and to worship is the things that are going all wrong in your life. Hallelujah. But God says, rejoice. Think about what is going right in your life. Hallelujah. And focus on that. That'll see you through. Amen. That'll get you through. Hallelujah. So yes, I said in the onset, and it was kind of hard for me to say it. I thank God that he's allowed, he's allowed this pandemic. And that's hard for me to say. Hallelujah. But now that I see that there's some good in it, amen, God is bringing us together, making us desire. Amen, hey, glory. Make me realize that I got to love my brother and my sister. I can rejoice. Make me realize that I need a closer relationship with thee. Hey, it makes me realize that I won't turn back. Hey, glory. Hallelujah, I won't turn back. I can rejoice. So my friend, on today, if you receive Jesus in your heart, hallelujah, and believe that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, you repent and turn from all of your sins and get baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the will of God. That's God's plan of salvation for your life. Hallelujah. And you talk about rejoicing. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. My God. But when, when I was a shy person. Thank you, Lord. Even today, when people hear me preach and teach and they knew me growing up, they said, That little Frankie? Thank <laughs> you, Lord. That little Frankie? <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But there's something down on the inside. Hey, that's telling me to go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and I forgot my point. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But, but, but it's a difference. It's a change. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm rejoicing. Rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and I was so happy that God had filled me with the Holy Ghost and took away the burden of my sins everywhere I went. Hallelujah. I was hugging people, telling them I love them. Strangers, complete strangers. Hallelujah. I was telling them I love you. And they, and the strange thing about it, they could feel the love. Hallelujah. I had one person come up to me and say, man, I feel, I feel your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's that rejoicing. That's that giving of thanks. Never going back. Never going back to the way things used to be. Hey, hallelujah, rejoice in your shame. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter what you've been through. Hey, hallelujah. But you still got that joy. Yeah. You still got to keep that peace. You still got to have joy that flows like a river. Yeah. Hallelujah. A lot of us have had some shameful things happen to us in life, and I'm sure we could all write our own book. Hallelujah. But you know, at the end, we should, we should write, uh, when my soul looks back in wonder, huh, how I got over. Hallelujah. We ought to rejoice in the Lord. Hey, and again I say, rejoice. We certainly do thank God for this message. Hallelujah. We thank God for you all tuning in. Thank you, Lord. And, and enjoy the day. Do something special for somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Today would be the day we give out carnations and, and uh, some red, some white to the ladies, to the families, to the, to the mothers on today. Thank you, Lord. But I'm going to give all people kisses. Thank you, Lord. I love you and I appreciate you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to rejoice with you. Hallelujah. Because God has a plan. Amen. God has a plan for you. And if you trust God, thank you, Lord, even when it looks like an oxymoron. Uh, yeah, glory. My God, I'm trying to move off that word, but even when it doesn't look right, uh, know that God is up to something. When it doesn't smell right, know that God is up to something. Oh, thank you, Lord. It, when it looks like an oxymoron, then you know God is in it. 
Hallelujah. So we thank God for you. And I love Christian ministries. I love the body of Christ. And I love the work of the Lord. So be encouraged. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. And give God a praise for our praise team, our first responders coming out today doing an outstanding job. Hey, hallelujah. You know what? I just want to let them have their own concert. Thank you, Lord. I'll just be rejoicing in Jesus. Hallelujah. So we thank God for you. I thank God for those that have come to be with us on today. And we praise God for you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.